the box. You don't need the Paramount that box. Our objective for today, I can solve and graph multi-step one variable equations. Read together. One, two, three. I can solve and graph one multi-step one variable equation. So today we're continuing on from what we started yesterday. Yesterday we started with multi-step equations and then we did our Frayer model, right? And then I gave you a definition. So think about it without looking at your notes. I said on the definition, circle these words. It was an easier definition, right? Tell you never the definition for one variable equation without looking at your notes. <laughs> Yeah. Bless you. All right. I said underline where it said two expressions equal to each other, one variable. Is that correct? Yes. I said that exact thing. I said underline two e expressions equal to each other, one variable. Remember that? All right. I also gave you steps. What were the four steps? Simplify, isolate, plot, and check. So now check this out. Last night, a lot of us, including in tutoring, we just solved, and that's it, right? But what is the process? Well, guess what? Those of you that did the entire four steps, I gave you guys a sticker, and you get a free home plate pack. That's what's happening. So whenever you like have an emergency and you come in, show me that sticker. That's gonna come for your home play in case you didn't uh, finish. All right. So with that said, on the Q side of your Cornell notes, write these properties down. Now, yesterday that we started with equations, we started using some properties. I didn't identify them yesterday, but I'm gonna identify them today. So write these down on the Q side. The first property. Uh, yeah, on the Q column. Yeah. Addition property of equality is one property. So what does that do? An addition property of equality is when we add something to both sides of the equation. That's why it's called addition property of equality. What is it called? Addition property of equality because we add to both sides. So you remember what that does again? So copy this next property down. Subtraction property of equality. Tell your neighbor what that property does. That is correct. You subtract from both sides. Look at this next property. Multiplication property of equality. Tell your neighbor what that one does. Multiply on both sides of the equation. You're saying, why are you giving us these properties? Because tonight, after you solve, you need to show me all the properties you use. Let's go. From the quarter, let's go. Uh, and the fourth property that I want you to write down, division property of equality. Tell your neighbor what that one does. When you divide on both sides, that is correct. Now let me show you the next properties. Don't write down the next ones that I'm going to show you because we already have them written down. What properties have we been using? Let's see. Have we been using commutative property of addition and multiplication. Yes. How about associative property of addition and multiplication? How about distributive property? Yes. Uh, zero product property, when you multiply times zero, you get zero. How about have we, we've been working with exponential expressions and their properties? Yes. And there's more properties, but for right now, I just wanted to refresh in those. So the new ones are what? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, properties of equality, because we are in what? equations. Does that make sense? All right, so we're going to do one problem together and identify all the properties. And this is how I want the home plate tonight. Here we go. Copy this down. Example one. Even though we already did this one, um, we're going to do it again, but now with properties. Okay? All right, copy that. Example one. It says, example one, solve. 8x minus 21 minus 5x equals negative 15. By now, you should know how to solve this, right? But let me get you started. Here you go. Bam. You're welcome. <laughs> Finish it off, solve it, and then uh, we'll talk about it right now so we can get the property. Copy that and go. 
All right, here we go. Get us started. Uh, Alvaro, what is the first thing you did? Okay, close. The first step is to simplify one side and then the other, right? So, Alvaro, if we were to simplify this side, what would you do? So then what does that leave me with? 3x, and then I'd write down negative 21 equals to negative 15. Hands if you did that step. Okay, Alvaro. Here it goes. I'm refreshing your memory. When we started with polynomials, and then from there we went to uh, combined like terms, we were able to move stuff around and then combine stuff together. What properties did we use to do that? Talk it over to your neighbor. Alvaro, talk it over to your neighbor. All right, let's see. Alvaro, pass it to um, Armando. Okay, Armando, what property did we use? Commutative, write that down. Commutative. Property of what, um, Armando? No, no, no. We only did it to one side. It's not exponents. Of addition. That is correct. So once we move that around, what is the other property that we use, Armando? We combine them. We didn't add anything to each side. Okay, let me show you what, what, what Alvaro did in his noodle. Because right now we didn't write down the step because we're past that. But let me show you what he did. He did 8x minus 5x minus 21. Is that correct? And then he did this to simplify this. Is that correct? So what is this property? Associative property of addition. Does everybody see it now? Yeah. But do we show this? No, we do this in our noodle, right? We just go, oh, 8x minus 5x is 3x and bring that one down. All right. Continue, uh, Brisa. N. What's the next step? Add 21 to each side. That leaves us with what, Brisa? What property did you use for that? What did you use to for, what did you do to each side? You add it, so what is that property called? We just wrote them down on the paper, right? Everyone, when we add something to each side, it's called what? Addition, property of equality. All right. Next. Kind of. Divide each side by what? And we get what? X equals 2. What property did you use? Division property of equality. See what we're doing now? Yeah. So basically we're solving, but we're using properties to justify what we did. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Of addition, because we have, you see how we combine stuff? We can only have either addition or multiplication. That's what we've done before. Snack people, bye. Have fun. All right, let's go to the next one. Yes, copy this next one, crank it up a notch, or do this one by yourself. Um, not this one, this one. Yeah, I'll zoom in. Example number four. We got 10y minus, parentheses, 4y plus 8, close parentheses, equals to negative 21. Solve that one. I'm sorry, is, uh, 
minus 20, my bad. Uh, solve that one and then show me properties also for each step, okay? I'll get you started. There you go. Boom. There you go. <laughs> Copy that and go. All right, let's see. Uh, help me out. Get us started, please. How about you die? What do I do? Distribute the negative, which is added with negative one. Okay. So what do I write on this next line? Ten y, negative four y, negative eight, equal negative twenty. And what is that property called? Distributive property. That is correct. Pass it to someone? Armando? So what do I write? Negative 20. What property did you use for that? Associative property of addition. It's either addition or multiplication. All right. Um, tell your neighbor why we didn't write now, right now when we did uh, combine like terms. Why didn't we write commutative property? Talk to your neighbor. Tell them why we didn't write commutative property. Oscar, go. Why? <laughs> Why didn't we write commutative property? Because we didn't move anything around. Is that correct? We we only grouped ten and the four. Yes. All right. Pass someone. No. Who went Who went last on the step? Armando. Pass someone. Daniel B, what do you do next? Add 8 to each side, and we get 6y equal to what? Negative 12, and what is that property called that you use? Addition, property of equality. That is correct. Pass someone? I'm right. Go. By six, and we get Are you asking me or telling me? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. But that is correct. So what is the property? Wow. Uh, what property, I'm right? That is correct. Division property of equality. And if you got that, that is correct. Show me with the fingers how comfortable you are with these by now. One being the lowest, five being the highest. How comfortable are you with these? Got some fives, threes, fours, five, threes, fours, five. Some of you need manicures already. All right. All right. Uh, one more. One more of these. All right. Here we go. Copy this one. Example super cube. Copy that, please. Yes, write it down. No, just copy the black text. <laughs> yeah, don't copy the white text on the top or the side. Okay, the blue text also. All right. Example Super Q says, Jordan scored seven more points than Kobe. Q scored two times as many points as Kobe. In total, the three scored 75 points. How many points did each one of them score? 
Copy that. You got 30 seconds. Go. All right, so those of you that are done writing this down, I want you to write the following acronym next to it. Does everybody know what an acronym is? It's a word where each letter means something. So here we go. Write this down. Cute. Cute. We're going to use that acronym to solve these kind of problems. Okay? And I'll show you what, what each part means. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the color green. I'm going to circle the letter C because the letter C stands for circle important numbers. Circle important numbers. So what are important numbers from this problem? Seven more, two times, and 75 points. That's important. So we're circling important numbers. Next. With red, I'm going to underline the letter U with red because the letter U stands for underline the question because a lot of you forget to answer the question of word problems. Who forgot last time on the last part to answer some of the questions with a statement? A lot of you, right? You just wrote a number at the end. Oh, two. Two what? Two games left in the store. You see what I'm saying? Next, I'm going to change to blue. I'm going to box the letter B with blue because it means box important or relevant information. Look at the first part. What it is important for the first part? That Jordan scored. What would be important on the second line? Q scored. About the third line. About the three scores. All right. Next, with black, I'm going to put up X over the letter E. I'm going to cross it out. What do you think that means? Exclude any irrelevant information. So what are we going to exclude? What is not as important? Kobe, of course. <laughs> hey, that worked out well, right? Okay. <laughs> so for right now, we're not going to cross it out, but we're not going to need it for right now. Okay? And lastly, the letter D stands for draw pictures or tables to organize your information. Draw pictures or tables. Now, for those of you that haven't really uh, paid attention, every time that you come and get an iPad to the iPad card, the acronym is on that poster. Yeah, I left it there so that it can start sinking in by itself, little by little. Did anybody read it before? No? Wow. Yeah. All right. So, thank you very much. Uh, Daniel B to Mr. Sanchez. No, I'm just kidding. You're leaving. Yeah. Uh, you can go to the YouTube channel so you can watch the video. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's uh, let's do this one. We're gonna do this one together. I'm gonna draw a table to get this one done. Now, how do I draw a table? Let me show you how. How many people or how many items are they talking about? Three. So right away we draw three lines down. One, two, three, and one across. See how easy that was? Later, Daniel. Next, let's fill out the title for each column. Who's the first person they mention? So we label this one J. What's the next person they mention? So we label it K. Who's the next person? Q. So look, we already used all of them. What do you think we're going to label the last one? That is correct, total. So by looking at all the numbers that were given, what, was, what will be the easiest information to fill in on our table? The total, which is what? So that goes right here. That's easy. Blessing 75. Are we there so far? So now check this out. How do we fill out the rest? Let me show you. Look up. Let's go with the... We boxed in for important information. What was important? That Jordan scored. So I checked Jordan because they tell me about Jay. 
who else did they tell me about? They don't. They didn't tell me a lot about them. Q. So that means I check off Q. So who's the only one that they don't give us a lot of information? Kobe. Well, guess what? Kobe will be our X. Does that make sense? Anyways, Kobe will be our X. Are we there? So here we go. With that said, now that we have our variable, we go back up. Guys, focus, please. <laughs> I'm telling you, right now, every three seconds to five seconds that you get distracted, you miss something. I was about to move forward, but I can't move forward because you guys were distracted. Are you guys ready? Oh, my goodness. Here it goes. X. So let me read this. Jordan scored seven more points than Kobe. If Kobe is X, what shall I write for Jordan? Talk it over to your neighbor, please. Remember, it has to be in standard form because we already covered polynomials in standard form, right? All right, everyone, what do we write? X plus seven. That is correct. Seven more, that is correct. Next, Q scored two times as many points as Scobie. So you never what to write right there. That is correct. Two X. Alright? So if all of them if all three scored seventy five points, that means that I need to add all of these. Is that correct? I need to add this one plus this one plus this one equal to that. So I bring this down x plus 7 plus x plus 2x equals to 75. Does this look familiar? Yes. yes. I'll help you out to get started. There you go. Finish it off and answer the question with a sentence, please. Have you heard what I just said? All right, copy that and go. All right, let's see what we got. First of all, what is the solution for X, Abraham? Solution for X, yes. X equals 17. Are we there so far? Are we done? We need to answer the question. How many points did each of them score? Who has a statement for me? Alvaro. That is incorrect. Pamela. In the game, Jordan made, what else? 24 points, comma, Q made 34 points, and Kobe made 17 points, 10 Q. You're saying, how did that happen? Well, wh who's X? Kobe. What is Jordan? 17 plus 7, which is 24. And what is Q? 2 times 17, that is 34. You good? Yes. No. Copy this one, example seven. Seven n minus two equals five n plus six. Seven n minus two equals five n plus six. Line down the equal sign. And you're like, oh yeah. Here we go. Look up to the screen. What is our first step in every time we solve? Simplify. Can we simplify the left side anymore? How about the right side? No. But now we have a dilemma. We have variables on both sides. Then what is the next step? The next step is to isolate the variable, send it to one side. That means we start with the smallest variable. What is our smallest variable? Five. So let's identify that. What is the, how can we cancel that one if that one's a positive 5n? 
negative 5n. That is correct. So that means if we do a negative 5n to each side, this cancels, and we're left with 2n minus 2 equals 6. Do we know what to do from there? Yes. yes. We add 2, add 2, 2n equals 8, divide by 2, divide by 2, n equals 4. Yes? Do this next one by yourself. Once again, we always start with the smallest variable. Copy this one. Example 8. 5d plus 2 equals 3d plus 8. Oscar, where do we start? Negative 3b, negative 3b. We're left with 2b plus 2 equals 8. Hold well, on, we're not done. One, one last one. Minus 2 minus 2. 2b equals 6. And then divide by 2. b equals 3. Are we there so far? Okay, so watch. Last one. Write any utensils down, look up to the screen. Don't copy this one, just pay attention. Here we go. Line down the equal sign. What is our first step? No, no, no. Think, think about the, the steps. Simplify. Can I simplify the left side? Yes. What is 15 minus 9? 6, positive, bring down the 3x. Can I simplify any more? No. This one. Distribute, we get what? 2x plus 4. Isolate. So what do I do from there? Minus 2x minus 2x. We end up with x plus 6 equals 4. And my last step, minus 6 minus 6, x equals negative 2. See how that works? Home play for tonight is on page 94. All, have a good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. All only. See you guys tomorrow. There is tutoring, so I don't see you. See you tomorrow.